Hi again, everyone. I have gotten so many questions about Terrence Howard's one times one equaling two. I thought I had to absolutely address it. I really applaud the efforts and work of Terrence. I know Terrence, he's been in my house. He's actually been in my office as well. I think highly of a lot of the work that he's basically putting out there. Uh, and especially I like the work related to Walter Russell and Michael Evans. Michael Evans is someone who's also been on my math research team. He was on for about four years. And um, he basically really did the very first work to plunge into deeply this, uh, this notion of the negative space of the flower of life. And his first work related to it was all the way back to 1974, I believe, maybe even earlier in 1972 and 1973. Uh, so Michael Evans' work is really fundamental. I actually have a tetratrine, which is the inner segment. It's kind of like a, a tetrahedron, but it's the shape of this trion ray inverted. And this is also something that was innovated by Michael Evans. I actually have one in my house. I posted it on my Orion chat group uh, just to answer some of these questions I've been getting so often about this. Um, and so I really love the work of Michael Evans. I really love the work also uh, related to Walter Russell and the periodic elements. I've also done a ton of work related to that myself, which you can find in my book, Philomath. But having said that, I did want to address this one issue of one times one equaling two, and whether or not this is really true. Well, the best thing I could do is to take it to mathematics. Math actually is beautiful because there are proofs related to mathematics. And the very first proof I could point to related to this particular topic is something called the spiral of Theodorus. The spiral of Theodorus is unique because what it does is it takes one side and you've got a value of one, and then you've also got the value of the square root of one, which is still one, on a right triangle. And then from that, you form another right triangle from the hypotenuse that's formed from that. Then another right triangle from the hypotenuse that's formed from that triangle, and you connect it all the way. And what happens is the square root values of every single number into infinity actually show up there. It becomes a very, very obvious pattern in the form of what's known as an Archimedean spiral. So I'm going to take you through this so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And you can be the judge. So we start with a line value of 1. Right? We start with a line value of 1. And then another line value of 1. And this, of course, also is the square root of 1. We're going to take this around. So now the length of this line here is going to be exactly 1.4142. And then it goes out into infinity. So 1 and 1. And then it gives you the square root of 2. And it's, of course, related to a squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2. So it's exactly giving us a geometric proof of this. Square root of 2 being 1.4142. Now, we're going to extend this and make another right angle from the hypotenuse. We'll keep the exact same value of the radius here, starting the center point of a circle from here, as being 1 as well. So now this value of this line will also be 1. And what we get here is a squared equals the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared equals 3. So the length of this line is 1.732. The length of this line is 1. So now we extend it again further, keeping this value as 1, this value as 1, this value as 1. And this gives us the square root of 4. We do the same thing further out, and it gives us exactly the square root of 5. We could continue this forever, in fact, and if we keep keeping the side value of 1 here, it will always be the very next square root value, without exception. So the next being square root of 7, the square root of 8 will continue, the square root of 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, what this video does, it actually tests to see if it's true that you go all the way out to the square root of 1,000 and if the whole model will continue to hold. So this is creating this Archimedean spiral, the proportions of it. And sure enough, every single number, it doesn't matter how far you go out, there's mathematical proofs on this, 
on the spiral of Theodorus will always be, when you keep the outer line, value of one, will always be the very next square root value, without exception. Even at 1,000 and 10 million and 10 hundred, you know, uh, 10, 100,000 or, or 10 billion, it doesn't matter, 10 trillion. It will go out like that forever and ever. So this becomes the proof that the structure of the spiral of Theodorus is giving us exactly the value of the square root of two as being 1.4142. It's a geometric proof, and the pattern is very, very evident and obvious. Now, we could take this another step further, and now let's look at something else. So we're gonna look now at music. So in music, we have a scale. In the scale of music, we could start with a unison value, and then let's assume that that unison value is just one hertz, right? All we have to do then is we can take the square root of two, which is 1.4142, and it will inform every single note separation that exists in equal temperament tuning. So, for example, we start with the middle of the octave, which is the diminished fifth, right here, the diminished fifth, and that comes out to the square root of two, 1.4142135623. Now that's equal to two to the power of one half. So two to the power of one half is the same as saying the square root of two. So we've got the 12 over six, right, which is basically two, and then, and then you take that to you know, the one half, so you put one over two, that becomes two to the power of one half, which is equal to 1.4142. Now we can break every single note up, which includes the minor second, the major second, the minor third, the major third, the fourth, the a diminished fifth, the fifth, the minor sixth, the major sixth, the minor seventh, and the major seventh, and the octave. What is informed then is that the 12 over one root of two is equal to 1.059, which is giving us essentially the value that is related to the equal temperament scale. So every note is the 12 over two root of two, which would be the next note, the 12 over three root of two, because there's 12 notes in the octave, the 12 over four root of two, the 12 over five root of two, the 12 over six root of two, back to the square root of two value. The 12 over seven root of two, the 12 over eight root of two, the 12 over nine root of two, the 12 over 10 root of two, and the 12 over 11 root of two. So since light and music and the scales of sound are literally just opposite conditions of each other, all light and sound come from the same source. If we don't have the square root of two equal to what the spiral of Theodorus would suggest to us, then literally there could be no light and no sound in the entire universe. There would be nothing. If one is the value on each one of these, come back around, if one is the value on each one of these, then all you would have for all of these values is the number one. You would have no other values and no other differentiation. You would have no musical scale of da, 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 da. You wouldn't have that. You would have no light also. So literally, if the square root of two was just one, then we would not have any of the notes of a scale we would have no sound, no light, and the universe would cease to exist. Now, having said that, I believe in manifestation. And I also believe that one can be divided infinitely. And as one can be divided infinitely, you could say that zero to the power of zero equals one, but one can be divided infinitely, so it can literally become everything, because everything starts from the modadicity, from the number one. As a result, I actually believe as well that we live in a universe of our belief systems and we can only expand to the cage of our own belief systems. So I do like the fact that Terence is challenging what our assumptions are, but one times one, if it really did equal two, we would literally see the universe cease to exist. But at the same time, do I believe it's possible to believe in some notion that one times one could equal an infinite value? I do, because actually it can be divided infinitely. I believe it could be multiplied infinitely as well. And the number one has within it the power of all other numbers, because infinity is embedded inside the number one. I hope that answers your question. 
the proof is here in the mathematics that we literally have the spiral of Theodorus, which defines for us exactly the value of every single square root value into infinity. This is a mathematical proof. And it also informs for us that the right triangle that has one and one on both sides will have a hypotenuse that will be the square root of two. In addition, we have the musical notes as well as all light and all sound that emanates off of that, both in scalar and transverse waves. And if the square root of two was really one, then literally we have no differentiation and no perception in this universe. Thank you very much. I hope that answers your questions and uh, look forward to seeing you all again soon. Love to you all.